Hey, who's that guy back there? <laughs> There's a button to lower it. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what are we filming? Yeah, we'll just do a, a quick, uh, quick video today. Do you know where we're going? I have no idea. All right, that's how we roll. Number one, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. All right, we parked. Uh oh. Got Jamie here. N6 JFD. N6 JFD. All right. That's me. And there's Border Patrol. We're right on the New Mexico, on the Mexico border. There's a detention facility here, up against a firing range, and yeah, we're just hoping we don't get squashed in between there. That will be fine. There's some folks up there in a vehicle. Yeah, I don't think that's Border Patrol. No, I think they're goofing around, although there is a lot of Border Patrol vehicles around here. I'm sure. They go up in the mountains and then hang out and watch. Okay. The, uh, as you can see as a chart here, I look down and we're, we're on the, going the wrong way, or not as charted, but, um, Jamie and I looked at it, it's like, okay, we can make it go work. up this and around, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. It's not that far of a hike. Jamie's good with it. Yeah. I need movement. Feels good to be outside. Exactly. Moving and grooving, as long as we don't have any bullets going overhead. I do know what that sounds like. Oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to ask you a question. We are going. <laughs> Got a seat right here. Oh, yeah, say, do you wanna be able to use your poles? Yeah. And not have to focus on holding steady? So, Jamie, N6 JFD, how long you been doing uh, soda? Uh, first activation was 2015. All right. So I'm coming up on seven years. Wow. And- No, I'm past seven. Last I looked, you're number four in California. You got double goat, you're at like close to 2,300 points, is that right? Somewhere in there, 22 to 23. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right behind you, I just can't catch you right now. Especially when I take you on a soda with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that uh, I had a lot of free time in Scotland. You're lucky I had to drop six of my peaks because that was 60 points right there. Uh, I just was like, Towards the end of my West Highland Way walk, my focus shifted towards, I want to complete this trail, not I want to get these six points, because it had been so long. Oh, wow, he's below us. Because um, it had been so long since I had done a point-to-point -point named medium slash long trail. So I pretty much left out a bunch of peaks because I was like, ah, I'm two days of walking away. Let's just coast on in. But anyways, yeah. Um, I'd like to say I'm trying to chase down KD7 WPJ. Yeah. But man, every so often he'll just put the hammer down. Yeah. And he keeps that thousand point lead extended. Yeah. I was looking at that yesterday. So Jamie um, has, what are your, you probably have some uh, backcountry certifications of training yep which go perfectly with summits on the air tell me a little bit about that all right so the one that i would say is most important to me and most used would be my leave no trace trainer um i'm really big on minimal to no impact um you know we can't all be good i've lost feed lines um, i know we've got fellow cohorts who are of like mind who've lost poles, whatever. <laughs> <coughs> Did somebody lose an HT once or leave an HT on a summit? Claiborne. Yeah. Oh, that well, was you. Sorry, I was thinking it was like Adam or It came Flint. off my pack and it was in a super, super gnarly 
uh, an area where I was practically having a low crawl. Yeah. I was time constrained. I figured uh, I wouldn't find it. And I didn't even want to go back there, but I had to skedaddle. Yeah. That was a bear. Oh yeah. Yeah, HTs aren't cheap. Well, this is a bow thing. But anyways, and the other Ooh. one, I am a wilderness first responder. A lot of that comes from my search and rescue days. And the funny thing is, is the only time I've ever used those skills as a soda op was I was in North Carolina a couple years ago uh, doing a, one of my favorite peaks along the AT called Hump Mountain. Um, and I came across somebody who was having a diabetic crash. And uh, Let me move in front of you here a little bit. And uh, that's the closest I've actually come to using any of my medical training in the field. So, but those are my two biggies. I've got little ones, other little ones here and there, but those are the ones that I think make a big impact. Um, you know, leave no trace. If you don't know much about leave no trace, plan ahead and prepare is like the number one principle. That's all a lot of us do. I mean, I've prepared for thousands of soda activations, have maps ready to go, probably have like 15 or 20 different soda maps with GPXs, both hand-drawn and downloaded. All right. That, uh, yeah, um, you know, there's just little things you can pick up out of those, but uh, wilderness medicine is important. You never know who you're going to encounter out here. Yeah, or, if you're not helping yourself, you're helping someone else. Exactly. And uh, I was an army medic, and then I got a civilian EMT when I was younger. So I've got the basics. Since then, I've had a bunch of first aid training to kind of keep things up. Yeah. Um, so I feel, I feel like I can do everything that needs to be done, which really is stop the bleeding, number one. Yep. And that came in, came in handy. I was in New Mexico and put a hole in my leg. Oh, yeah. So the only place I've used my training is on myself. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean... Which is important because nobody else is going to save you. Right. You have to be ready. So I'm really big on top three things is you have enough water yep. to share. You're going to drink all of it almost and still have some to share. I always come back down with water. Number two is enough layers because yeah. you get to a pee or you could get hurt in the field and you're going to have to wait, right? Yeah. At least 24 hours sometimes where guys can get organized, figure out how they're going to get to you, be safe themselves. <laughs> and then number three, probably good to have a medical kit. It's certainly helpful for me. Yeah. So, well, and funny you would say that, you know, because the one thing that the like wilderness medicine teaches you, it's more of an art than a skill. So the art is the skill. And like my med kit, like, yeah, you go to REI and you buy those big, you know, uh, two, three, four pound kits that like, yeah, sure. You could probably do full surgery in the back country with <laughs> my med kit is laughable. I carry three or four tampons. Yeah. A roll of gauze and some athletic tape or medical tape. Yeah. Because it's like you said, you got to deal with that major bleed. You got to stop the bleed. Yeah. You know what? I mean, a tampon is it's designed to soak up blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. They're one of the best, best things to use in a trauma situation. You know, if you have nothing else, throw that on there. They're clean. Yeah. Um, and you know, gauze wrap it and uh, you're set. Um, yeah. If you've got it, you know, I don't have my, a lot of times I'm carrying a three quarter Z rest. You could splint a lot of things with a three quarter Z rest and like an extra shirt. There's your broken arm, right? Your broken collarbone, whatever. Um, same thing. Um, if I'm really carrying what I call my 24 hour pack, I'll also have like about 20 feet of one inch webbing or maybe about 50, 50 feet of P cord. Right. Right now I've got about 15 feet of two mil. Right. I could, you know, if you broke an ankle, I could probably dress it up with what I've got. Yeah, put some sticks and other supports on there, right? Exactly. You know, sticks, a Z rest, and like you, you could use the, use the, either the P cord or the webbing. Like I could, you know, lasso it around your foot and that would allow you to hold steady. Right. Um, 
you know, you could hold it in place however you want to hold it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with just the stuff in your pack. It's like, oh gosh, we haven't been to the grocery store in a month. What's in the pantry and what we, can we throw right, together? Right. In a lot of ways, that's MacGyver what it, right? Pardon? MacGyver it. Yeah, exactly. In a lot of ways, that's what wilderness medicine is, is what can I utilize and not have to carry 20 pound med kits with me? It's right now, like certainly oxygen. day pack is going to be different than a week pack. Yep. But you just need to you just need to stabilize until you can get help if needed. Yep, exactly. You know. Yeah, exactly. And that's I mean, and given my training, I had a plan A for my hole and then a plan B if that didn't work. Yeah. Plan C if that didn't work. And then I had comms. Yeah. I had tons of comms. So I had satellite at HT, perfectly clear into an awesome repeater up there. And then I had had cell service, but only at the peak, Yeah, which is where this happened. <clears throat> so what would be your top three? Uh, top three, like? You got to have. Um, like you, I believe in layers. Um, a knife, you can do so much with a knife, depending on how big or small it is. You know, uh, a lot of the survivalist bushcraft training I've done over the years is of the philosophy that there's nothing you can't do with a four inch knife. Huh. Um, and granted, that's, go ahead. That's one thing I'm not skilled at really understanding. I mean, I can certainly cut stuff for making splints and things, but well, fire, and, which is absolute last resort. Yeah. Emergency only, no fires. Exactly. Um, uh, but you could build shelters. I mean, you could whack down, I mean, we don't have a lot of trees here, but like you could whack up this, uh, this the chaparral, yeah. Yeah, the chaparral stuff, if you needed to make cover. Yeah. Um, Right. Um, and think outside the box. Just, yeah, stop and think. I mean, just stop and think about the training you have had yep. and use that. Yep. And I think we're both saying, you know, for your day hike, little overnight camps, you don't need to be a paramedic. Nope. So anyway, there you go. Yep. First aid with Jamie and 6 JFD. Yep. Sweet. Let's move on up this hill. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Like, you know, if I were still working tech, I'd be like, shh already on order, I'll pay for it. Buy that new radio. Yeah, now it's like, Ugh. well, I got two radios I really like. My kit's still lighter than if I were carrying a KX2, but oh my God, having 10 bands and an ERW would be great. <laughs> <laughs> or an a ATU. Yeah, yeah so with built in ATU. I'm setting up the KX2 with the K6ARK random wire that I built. And uh, what are you gonna run? Um, I really love playing with my QCX Mini. Uh, I have a 17 awesome. meter QCX. Um, that actually probably got more work than Brian in 6 izs uh, MTR2. I had to send my MTR3 and L, uh, to LNR before I left. Uh -huh. And so Brian's like, yeah, this is my like third tier radio. I don't ever use it. You can borrow it for the summer. I was like, all right, I'll just Sweet. have LNR ship my radio to you and you can hold it as, uh, what do you call that, collateral? Yeah. And so, uh, but oddly enough, my, the QCX got more work in Scotland and Europe than the MTR did. Oh, be darn. That's so, great. I'm going to play on my QCX Mini today, see what I get. Um, well, and you always have access to a KX2 up here. And I always have access to the KX2. I brought my MTR2. The big issue oh, nice. with running two radio systems is you have to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Tear down antenna once, put up the other antenna. Uh, I'm working on a 17, 20, 30, 40 link, so that way I can do one and just plug whichever radio I want in. Right. But it's so what I built for my MTR was a uh, a 40 meter N fed half wave. Uh huh. If you throw a little um, choke on there, little feed line choke that's like a foot long. Yeah. It'll tune up. It'll actually res be resonant at 20 meter and 40. Nice. So for that one antenna, no links, you're in like Flint. So that's another option for you. Yeah. Build one of those babies. Super easy to do. Yep. Um, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. 
Yeah. <laughs> or the other option, granted, it's an expensive option, and it adds weight back into my pack. I spent so much time getting weight out of my pack. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think when I did the West Highland Way, even with carrying two radios and my soda beans carbon six, I was um, my pack weight was still about 25 pounds for a two week backpacking trip. Okay. And that was everything I needed, even though I did a mix of wild and posh camping. Right. But, right. Um, but yeah, it's like I think about like, oh, it'd be so nice to just get that KXP with an NFED random and just be done with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have fun with it. The big thing is go up there and have fun. Exactly. Hey, we're going to get set up and uh, start sending some cool waves into the atmosphere. That's right. set up his MTR over here. Um, we'll ask him what kind of antenna he has. He was using a QCX on some of his earlier contacts and he switched to his MTR. So it's not huge today. I've got like 26, 27 contacts, a couple of summit to summits. On a Friday, typically there are a lot more guys out, but the band seemed kind of funky today. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, so I started my activation with the QCX. The very first contact was Christian, uh, the other Christian over in France, F4. <laughs> um, no FTA, that's um, that Colorado. Yeah, no DNF is Idaho, that's Colorado. I was going to look this guy up real quick, WX1F. I think he's, um, well, call sign if you need him. All right, so Stratford, uh, New Hampshire, and LA. It's really funny. I mean, on 17 meter, I've gotten, you know, got France, got New England, but I also got like La Jolla. <laughs> <laughs> and 17's yeah. like that, though. 17 yeah. will get that short skip, you know, and it's funny. I'm sitting here. Is that what? Gus down there? Um, oh, I didn't get SSN. No, WB8 BSN. That's a new one for me. Um, and that should be like, what, Minnesota, Ohio, that area? Yeah, I don't know. Um, and then NU7A, um, oh, we were talking about that earlier, the, like, you know, there's WU7H yeah. and then he another one. He was my one. first contact on, uh, whatever, I was running 15. Okay, yeah, and then I had NU7, another one, where was he, NU7Y. Okay. And I was like, wait, I got this dude again. I got I? him too. Um, which, I think NU7A, which that's is. guy, isn't it? I got, well, maybe I didn't get the A, I got the Y. Okay, either way, yeah, um. I think one of those two is actually Guy, uh, one of the earlier, like he was one of the early W6 guys gotcha. uh, that helped with this. But and at one point, he was like the RM for W7, W0, N, as well as W6. Okay. And then they, yeah, uh, pulled in Paul. But I'm sitting at 20 total contacts. And it's funny, I got 10 on 17, and the other 10 are on 30, 24, uh, 30 40. Hmm. I haven't even done 20 yet. And it'd be interesting to see who I could get, but like 30 and 40, you know, 30, I got K6EL, but I also got N4 Lag, which N4 Lag, he winners in Arizona, doesn't he? I think so. Because um, I've activated with him on the East Coast, and yeah, he lives in Asheville, Lynn. He lives in Asheville, but I think he winters in Arizona, so I don't think I actually had a QSO to North Carolina, which is a bummer because I know uh, WW4D Pat's also on the air right now, and I was like, Hoping to get a summit to summit with him. Um, yeah, I couldn't hear him. Uh, maybe I'll get up there and try again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as you went to 30, there was somebody else on a CT peak on 30. On He was on 10. Yes, I tried to get him. I couldn't hear him. Okay, I couldn't hear him, but I could hear you sending, or I could hear somebody sending. Um, but it sounded more like bleed through, not an actual, like, deer. Got Scotty on 40, which I would expect that on 40, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if 20 is worth it today, because, yeah, you're right. I mean, 20, man, dude, I yeah. maybe got one contact on 20. I just... All right. 
terrible. I don't know why. All right, let's fire it. And he's California. <laughs> yeah, well, I say, yeah, we might be getting short skip. Although, what was it? I did get a 40 meter contact on some guy in La Jolla, W06JO. I haven't okay. met him yet, but he's a soda op. Um, yeah, his name's Joe, and yeah. I got him as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's pretty crazy that that squirt, short skip to La Jolla facing the wrong way. Yeah, yeah and you got the rock. <laughs> you got the rock right between you and La Jolla too. Yeah, exactly. So that's funny. I don't know if I'm getting them off the bush. Skip you, should be, or... you should be getting into South America, kid. Yeah, I'd say too bad there's <laughs> nobody activating in Argentina right now. That would have been a fun one. Although yeah, we can see the border from here. So yeah, I say there's where's the fence? Yeah, yeah, you can see the fence. Fence is running kind of this yeah. way. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I'll give it 20 a minute or two and see if All I right. muster up anything. And uh, I'm going to look for any other summits and I'll be hanging out. All right, cool. I'll be uh, right, looking for more summits to go. Then, then, it'll be, uh, then it'll be beer 30 or something. Exactly. Oh, yeah, it's always beer 30. Well, okay. Um, this is why I do wish I still had the KX because it is a, like, oh, look, Dave's up on 18 now. And I already yeah. got him, but still it would be like, it's just so annoying which, you wouldn't get him on 18 because I couldn't hear him. Really? Because that's yeah. how he got... Wait, where did he get, oh, no, he got me on 30. Which is strange. He got me on 30 or 40, I don't remember. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, cool. So, that's right, there you have cool. Yeah, there and you've got the MTR down here, yep. AB. Got my MTR and then you got a... It looks like an N-fed set up as an L. Yeah, I love the inverted L. Uh, you get the nice vertical. Um, it was like when I went back to... Uh, when I went to this setup last year, I just immediately started getting like five or six more contacts than I used huh. to been getting. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if it was just a timing thing or what, but I was activating my double goat with Paul, uh, W6 PNG. We both did double goat together. And, you know, we did the whole Daryl Josh thing, sharing radio. Yeah. And he had set that up and we were just getting contacts that I was never hearing. And so I'm like, okay, I'll try that. And uh, if there comes CHP or Border Patrol. I'm going to get Border Patrol. Um, yeah, and so, um, what do you call it? Um, and so I really like this setup. I'll occasionally do like inverted V or I'll even do sloper L or you know, other end. Right. But I just, I don't know, it's kind of nice being able to set up here. And then with my QCX earlier, I had it down in the bushes and just slope into it like what you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I really need to. Uh, I need to do a single NFED instead of two antenna two radios because um, that cuts down. I mean, like, what was it? My last contact on 17 was about 6.30 or 18.30, 18.27. And first contact on 30 meter was 18.58, so almost th well, exactly 30 minutes later. Now I came up and chatted with you for a bit, but it's like, okay, 15 to 20 minutes to turn this around. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, so I don't know. But I like the little radios because they're lightweight, and I still think what I'm carrying now, plus the QCX, is definitely a different case. Who, who built the QCX? I did. Nice. Uh, and so, yeah. you know, and, and I do like the fact that it is self-contained. I yeah. guess in theory it's redundancy, and on days like today where 17 was the workhorse band, and that seems to be what's been, like, that's, that's how this the money band today, I yeah. think. Yeah, and it's been like that for me at least all summer. I mean, like. Huh. Even in even in England with 2040, I'd get maybe 10, 15 contacts between 20 and 40, but I'd fire up the QCX and all of a sudden I'm getting like Italy, southern Spain or southern France, all of Spain. I actually had two Ukrainian contacts this summer, <laughs> cool. which is kind of strange if you think about what's going on there. Yeah, um, yeah. But like 17 would be the money ban, and I'd literally double my contacts. All the damn. And so yeah, and yeah, and so yeah, so I'm, you know. That's kind of my favorite rig right now, rocking that little QCX Mini, and it's pretty sturdy, and yeah, I built it, and it's cool. Um, it gets it done. It gets it done. Yeah. So, yeah. So, sweet. All right. Well, I'm going to send through 20 real quick. I'm going to go up and look for some Summit to Summit, and uh, hang yeah. out. You are rambling. But Hey, we're finishing up here, and uh, I got 25 contacts. Two of them were Summit to Summits. How do you do, Jamie? I got about 22 contacts, two summit to summits. My summit to summits were Elliot, KCTL, and um, David, N6AN. So the usual summit to summit suspects. Um, wow, there must be a lot of snow in Colorado. I can't remember the last time. Yeah, nobody's out today. Because Fridays is generally, yeah. you know, busy, but. 
Yeah. I think they were getting snow last week. Thursday's the new Friday, so now Friday's the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, so today. we did about the same there, and I think if I remember right, you worked one extra band, plus you worked side band, so some bands just aren't right. 17 meter was my money band today, 10 contacts, and then... Nothing was super strong for me. Yeah. Um, I didn't get Gary and Martha, so that threw my count way off, man. Wow. Really they saw me pop up. They're like, "We're out of here." Yeah, yeah. So it's lunch time. It's lunch time in Kansas. Yeah. All right. So we'll head back down. It's about 1.2 miles to the top via the route that we took, and I actually like that better than that other way that you had to kind of go down into a ravine and back up. It's like I'm I'm ready to go back the way we came. Worked out pretty well. Yep. All right. The car's still here. That's good. That's good. That's always good news. So if this were Nevada, those windows would have all been shot out. I see that, <laughs> I see that all the oh, time. Oh, dude. Behind us up there. That'd be terrible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we killed it. And uh, it, was, it was, I liked it actually. Easy getaway, you know, quiet. Nobody up here. Yep. What do you think, Jamie? No, it was really enjoyable. It was kind of really neat just being able to look down into Mexico. Um, I've been trying to find a way to want to activate down there and reach out to a couple of people. But yeah, no, it was nice to get out. You know, like you said, you were right. It's kind of, not kind of, it's super quiet. Yeah. Um, no, not bad. It's I always think... nice to get above a city. It'd be really cool to do a night activation up here just because I bet you got some oh, yeah. light. That would be cool. Yeah. Let's keep that in mind. On both sides of the border. As long as they don't get arrested. So... If you like this video, like and subscribe to make my ego even bigger. Because who doesn't want to see that? Um, go to hamninja.com slash SOTA360. There's a four-part series at that URL that talks about how to do the hobby, uh, from uh, activating to chasing and some other cool stuff out there, along with my great videos. Who doesn't want to look at those? So until next time, 73, let's roll the credits.